only if you'd rather talk to their photo or you find memories of them better than actual hugs. For that matter, is life at its grandest best when the most frequently used words in our vocabulary become words like cancer or divorce or depression? When our children or grandchildren, for whatever reason, are suffering, when, when hurricanes destroy property and a Las Vegas shooter can kill and maim hundreds of people in just a second, No, my friends, living our best life now, today, in the present, is not, nor has it ever been, our Lord's promise to us. He never said that the world's fallenness would fail to touch the lives of anyone, including, especially, His followers. In the Gospel reading, Jesus spoke of mourning, because mourning, sadness, and grief are part of everyone's lives now. Despite your socioeconomic status, how well people like you, or how well you esteem yourself, at some point, the fallenness of creation or your fellow human beings is going to touch your life, and your fallenness is going to touch their lives. It's just part of our now. It just comes with the territory now. And so here's the truth that Jesus would teach us in this word, life can never be at its God-intended best so long as tears of sadness wet the cheeks of His people and our hearts are made to hurt. No, God has not promised you your best life now, but He has promised you your best life later. On that last day when Jesus' promise of comfort becomes a fully present reality. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be, they shall be comforted. Reading from Revelation today gives us a preview, a beautiful preview of that day and of its comfort. Those who come through the the experience of life in a fallen, sinful world and, in other words, the great tribulation they will be comforted, or, or as the Greek text literally says, they will be called to the side of God, lifted from this fallen veil of tears and sorrows. And once there at the Father's side, God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. To wipe away someone's tears is a, it's a very intimate, a very personal act. Better than words could ever convey when when a mom or a dad gets down on their knees and they wipe away the tears of their crying child, that act says, I care. My friends, God does care. That's why He's given you the hope of this day through His Son, Jesus. And when He will wipe the tears away on that day, then the morning will go away too. Then His people will be sheltered from the scorching, blistering heat of a corrupted and fallen creation. Then the hunger of growling bellies and the thirst of parched lips will be satisfied. Then the leadership of those who've lifted themselves up by standing on the backs of others will give way to our shepherd, Jesus, who gave His back for us. Then neither sin nor death will exist to cause grief. Then we will live and lead our best lives, lives better than the Kennedys on their happiest of days, eternal lives in the company of those in Christ who went before us and in the presence of our Lord, no lack, no suffering, no frustration, no sin, not even bad parking. My friends, that's your best life. The life that God has promised. Life around the throne where sin and mourning are no more. When death has been undone in resurrection. And all the hurts and the griefs of sin are healed by our Lord Jesus Christ. God's best life given for you. A man, as the scripture says, intimately acquainted with sorrow. 
and familiar with grief, the, the sweat, blood, and tears of his suffering and grief, that the personal, intimate, caring act of your God that has conquered sin, the world's in your own, and opened the door to your best life. His empty tomb, God's guarantee that though your weeping may last for the night, the comfort of the dawn of that long-awaited morning will come just as suddenly and surprisingly as did that first Easter. And now, not your best life, but your blessed life. Blessed because those who mourn will be comforted. Blessed because now your robes have been washed in the blood of Jesus in baptism. All of your contributions to fallen life in a fallen world have been atoned for by Him. They're forgiven now. They are now gone. Blessed because His sweet comfort, His healing for all of your herd is now your promised inheritance. Blessed because Jesus and the words between the covers of His bestseller comes today to give you a preview of that day, to give you the pledge of His body and blood now. The pledge that guarantees, that seals, that sets in stone, that makes ironclad the arrival of God's best life for you. Just as we sang last Sunday, right now, this Jesus, He's by our side upon the plain with His good gifts and spirit. And take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife, though these all be gone, our victory has been won. The kingdom ours remaineth now. Yes, blessed are those who don't expect their best life now, but through faith in the victory of Jesus know that it draws ever closer. And so we pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in our soon coming Savior Jesus. Amen. Dear blessed, truly blessed children of God, stand with me now and confess your victorious faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated. Our worship continues as we gather the offering.